good morning welcome back so last class we did polish notations in that what are different kinds of notations available that is infix prefix and postfix then what is how does it get evaluated like what is operator precedence precedence is nothing but if a operand is in between two operators which operator would get the operand first so there are two conditions for that like one is the operator precedence which has got a precedence is nothing but the priority in which it gets evaluated that is which operator gets the first priority and then the next one is if you find in an expression the operators of same precedence for example multiplication and division both of them have same precedence then associativity that is uh, um, the operators uh, multiplication and division are left associative that is whichever is encountered first will be evaluated first getting it we converted or we did the conversion of few infix to postfix and po infix to prefix expressions it is easy like for human eye infix expressions are easy wherein the operators are in between the operands whereas for a computer it is very difficult it is more time consuming and space consuming for that reason while evaluation either it is converted into a prefix form or a postfix form prefix form where the operators are appended or comes before sorry not up ha comes before the operands that is operators comes before the operands is prefix form and operators comes after the operands is known as the postfix form prefix form is polish notation postfix form is reversed polish notation we did that now i will show you an example how exactly an evaluation of a postfix expression in a stack so stack is nothing but two operations one is push one is pop and then the last element that is the last in and first out principle it follows that as it have insertion and deletion that is push and pop happens from only one end known as the top end whereas top is a pointer which keeps track of the last element pushed in and the first to be popped out the same principle we are using here also this is the postfix expression the expression is a b plus c d e minus star plus you can see that all of the operators are after the operands getting it c a b plus will come in between because only once you convert it into a postfix form you will not be repeating once changed you will not repeat it again in again where a b c d e are operands and b minus star plus are operators and the value c a b c d e are variables and they can have values so the for example in this example i have taken or as a user i would have entered these values or given those values or hard coded those values or initial values i would have given whatever it may be the value of a is 5 so please don't keep thinking like how you got a is equal to 5 a can be 10 15 whatever but for example in this example i am taking the value of a as 5 b as 3 c as 5 d as 7 and e as 2 with these values we are going to evaluate this expression and we are going to get a result for it or an output for it getting it so what is the postfix expression a b plus c d e minus star plus so we are going to evaluate like take it extract it one by one so the first one is a character yes what are the different columns expression character what is the value and what are the stack 
contents at that point because see i told you stack is used to store intermediate results during the evaluation like yeah during evaluation there are many intermediate results wherein you push you pop you push you pop and finally you will get the result which will be again stored back so the first one is a so it's a character and value of a that is what i told you as a user i would have given a as 5 that 5 because i have character a is pushed into stack so stack has 5 there you can see here and then the next one is you can see here the value of a is 5 so as a user i would have given a as 5 in my program then this is 5 is pushed into stack and next i will retrieve the next one so the remaining postfix expression would be plus c d e minus star plus as long as you get a variable or a character that contents go on getting pushed into the stack so b is there what is the value of b3 i told you like i would have given 3 as a user then 5 comma 3 so stack contents of 5 comma 3 you can see here 3 is pushed in later the first is inside 5 goes to the 0th and then the one's location would be 3 you don't push it 3 5 it does not happen it is 5 3 you have to keep that also in mind after that the next is an operator right the two are operands here a and b are characters so just the values of that gets pushed into the stack after that i have plus so once you get an operator you need to pop in the last values the last two values the first value what was the first value three yes because that was the last in pushed out first first out the last element inserted or the last element in was three the first element was five then the other element the second element or i can say the last element because there are only two elements in stack pushed in was three so that would be the first element popped out that will go to the n2 and the next one will go to that is five because there are no other elements here goes to n1 and what is the operation here the operation is plus so what it will do is it will perform the operation n1 plus n2 so it will do five plus 3 it is n1 plus n2 but the first value popped out that is the last in value would go to n2 and the next value would go to n1 and push n1 plus n2 so it will calculate that is 5 plus 3 is 8 that gets pushed into 8 uh, sorry pushed into stack that is 8 see this is an intermediate one yes that's an intermediate one correct so then we'll continue with this d e because the next is character c so the remaining postfix expression is d e minus star plus because c comes here and the value of c i have entered is 5 so it will get directly pushed in the result was pushed in the next element pushed in would be 5 which is the value of c then e minus because d again i am extracting the remaining postfix expression is e minus star plus so e oh it's not sorry it's d here you make it d here not e because i have pushed in d here so d is seven eight five seven please make a there's a printing mistake so please change it to d because d e minus plus the remaining i am extracting d so d e sorry e minus star plus would remain here but d should be the character which will be expression value entered is 7 so it gets pushed in so 8 5 7 the last element pushed in is 7 before that 5 and the first element was 8 8 was not the element pushed in it was a calculated value get pushed in after that 
next element or the next character in the expression is e i am left with minus star plus and a gets pushed again e sorry e gets pushed e is equal to 2 so the value gets pushed until you get an operator you won't be popping out anything all the other operands gets pushed their values gets pushed in the stack so it is 8572 because e is 2 that is the last element which is pushed in so 2 is the top would be pointing there after that i have minus yes the remaining postfix expression is star and plus whenever you encounter an operator the two values would be popped out what was the two values here the last in first out principle so first two would be popped out then seven would be popped out my stack would be left with eight and five so two would go to n2 and seven would go to n1 i would perform n1 minus n2 because here the character is minus so i need to find the difference right so the first one there also the first one went to even i did addition also the first value that is popped out would go to n2 the second value goes to n1 same way here the first value popped out is 2 because 2 was the last element inserted which will go to n2 and the next element is 7 which would go to n1 i would perform n1 minus n2 because i have the operator minus there and whatever is the resultant of it would be pushed back to stack so it is 8 5 is already there n1 is 7 n2 is 2 that is 7 minus 2 is 5 so the result of that would be pushed back to the stack so the my stack contents are 8 5 and 5 5 is the last element pushed in after that i have a multiplication symbol the res, the left uh, postfix expression whatever is left of that is plus then i have star here which is again an operator when i have an operator i need to pop out values from stack so pop into what was the last element inserted 5 which was here that will go to n2 and the next element goes to n1 so n1 is 5 n2 is 5 because there are 8 5 5 these are the elements of my stack push what was the operation here product star i have n1 star n2 that is 5 into 5 which goes back to the stack i'm going to push that result to stack my stack will have 8 comma 25 5 and 5 i popped out so now i have 8 comma 25 which is the resultant of n1 star n2 then the last character of the postfix expression that is plus is taken again it's an operator so i will pop out two values what was the last in value 25 that would go to n2 and 8 would go to n1 what is the operation you need to do it is plus that is you are going to find the sum of it n1 sorry you make it n1 plus n2 it is not n2 plus n1 let it be n1 plus n2 and push it back to the stack which is 33 so hopefully you have understood this please make a note so that you will understand with this we come to an end of data structure stacks okay so we have learned push pop peak operations what are the applications of stack and how are those operation exactly performed how are they different from arrays and then uh, one of the applications of stack is polished notations what are the different kinds of notations how to convert one kind to another and then how exactly it's get it gets evaluated in stack so next we will be starting with data structures queues fine so before that please make a note of it So now we'll start with Q. Before that, I'll tell you the basic difference between a stack and a queue. Okay. 
a stack is a linear data structure where in which the elements are can be inserted or pushed and deleted or popped only from one side of the list that is one end of the list call the top of the list okay call the top that is insertion and deletion that is push and pop in stack it is push and pop insertion is push and deletion is pop happens from only one side of the list or one end of the list called the top of the list uh, that is a stack follows last in first out principle that is the element which was inserted in the last is the first element to come out that is the one which is pushed out sorry pushed in at the last will be the first to come out of the list the insertion of an element into a stack is called push operation and the deletion is called the pop operation so what do we do in stack in stack we always keep track of the last element which is present in the list when a with the help of a pointer called the top because with the help of top you can see that both pushed like you will know where in the whether there is any place to push in or not or whether there is which element to pop out because it would be pointing to the last pushed in element and then you can also check for the overflow and the underflow condition with the help of top whereas a queue is a linear data structure in which the elements can be inserted from one side of the list called the rare so in a queue the elements it's a linear data structure again the elements can be inserted from one side of the list called the rare and the elements can be deleted from the other side called the front so if i say a real life example also like for example you are yeah, waiting for a you buy a ticket in a reservation counter like you are standing in a queue to buy a ticket fine that counter is closed to begin with so what you will do a queue is formed first person will go and stand then the next will go behind the first person and so 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 the late person who comes in the end would be the end of the queue would be starting in the end of the queue that is the rare right you are inserting elements to the end of the queue to the rare of the queue you are not going and standing in front of the first person you are not pushing the first person and standing in front of him as and when people come you go and stand in the back so you, it is rare back is nothing but the rare correct that is how you stand and once the counter opens how do you go out how does the queue move the first person who was waiting for the longest time that is the first person who entered would be the first person going out correct so the queue would move from the front so the people would move out of the queue from the front because as and when you collect your ticket you move out so collecting happens from the front people move out from the front of the queue and people join the queue in the end so insertion in the end and deletion from the front correct can you imagine this example it's exactly like a queue wherein people join the queue they go on standing behind the person who was already there in the queue and when people go out of the queue it will always be from the end so a queue is a linear data structure in which elements can be inserted from one side of the list called the rare and the elements can be deleted from the other side called the front the queue data structure follows first in first out that is fifo first in first out principle the person who entered the queue first would be the first to go out of the queue yeah in real life also we follow the same thing the queue data structure that is first in first out so stacks follows last in first out whereas queue follows first in 
first out principle that is the element inserted at first is the first element to be removed from the list that is the first element coming in would be the first element going out the insertion of an element in a queue is called nq right the nq is nothing but insertion of an element is called nq there in stacks it is called push in queue it is called nq that is to insertion of an element into a queue is called nq operation and deletion of an element from a queue is called dq operation that is pop is nothing but dq when in respect of queues in queue we always maintain two pointers yes i need two because i need to keep track of the front as well as as well as the back that is insertion as well as deletion whereas because in queue the insertion happens from rear and deletion happens from front that is insertion and deletion happens from the two ends of the queue so that is why i would be needing two pointers okay i would need two pointers that is to keep track one pointing to the element which was inserted in the queue first and still present in the queue with the front pointer yes which was inserted and still present so that we should know which one to move out also right and the second pointer pointing to the element inserted at the last with the rear pointer so i need two pointers one to uh, check the first element inserted which is still present in the queue with the front and then the in element inserted which was at the last is called the last a rare pointer so front will maintain which element has to go out of the queue and rare is which element is inserted into the queue because the insertion happens from rare and deletion happens from front so front will see now what element should go out it will keep track of which element should go out of the queue and rare will keep track of the element which is inserted into the queue whereas in stacks i had only one pointer because the insertion and deletion happened from only one end that is stop used to keep track of that whereas in queue the insertion happens from the rear and the deletion happens from the front so i will have front and rear pointers to keep track of the elements of the queue please have a look so hopefully you have understood the basics well just the implementation of queues before that what is a queue is an ordered collection of items in which the items may be deleted at one end called the front of the queue and the items may be inserted at the other end called the rear of the queue so in queue you have two ends that is the insertion happens from the rear and the deletion happens from the front it follows the first in first out principle that is the element which entered the queue first would be the element which goes out of the queue first so there are two ends for that that is the front end wherein the elements are deleted and the rear end where the elements are inserted a queue can be implemented in two ways using arrays that is called static implementation here you have to note that if you implement queue using an array you are, since arrays are static that is the size of the array is fixed during the compilation time only you cannot vary the size or change the size of it and using pointer or link list is dynamic implementation dynamic is something which happens during run time getting it so the number of elements in a array is fixed and it is assigned during the declaration of an array only that is in general we cannot change the size of the array the same way see arrays and queues i am not saying they are same but if you are having array based implementation of a queue then you cannot change the size of the queue so on the other hand as you know the nature of queue is 
dynamic in nature right as and when people come the people keep on moving out it is not like you wait for all the people to come in and then start moving out since it will go on increasing decreasing the rapidly changes it is always better that if you implement it using link list or dynamic implementation so if the number of elements to be manipulated are limited that is you are not thinking of large numbers then it is better to have array based representation wherein the number of elements is dynamic it is better to implement queues using link list which is dynamic rep representation because as and when the size of the queue increases you can allocate memory dynamically and as well as you can deallocate it also dynamically whereas in array based representation which is static you cannot change the size of it because it is the nature of the array i am not telling the nature of the queue please may note here that i am not saying arrays and queues are same here i'm telling like if you are having an array based representation of a queue it is sta static implementation wherein array based implementation it is not representation array based implementation of a queue if i have array based implementation of a queue then since uh, arrays are static i cannot same way if i use array based implementation the size of the queue also becomes static that is you cannot increase or decrease but in general in nature the queue is dynamic we know that queue is dynamic because it can it keeps on changing the size frequently as and when people the elements get added it increases as and when elements get deleted it decreases so when you are thinking of large number of elements it is always better to implement a queue using a link list and if you are thinking of limited elements then it is better to have a array based implementation we will be doing array based implementation of a queue array representation of the linear structure yes uh, array is also linear structure stacks also is linear structure and queue is also linear structure the main difference between stack and queue is the insertion and deletion happens from only one end in stack that is why it follows the principle the last element pushed in would be the first element to go out whereas in queues the insertion happens from the tail or the back end or the rear of the queue whereas deletion happens from the front of the queue that is why the first element inserted would be the first element to go out so please have a look and then where are queues used some of the uses of queues are in system i'm talking about in system when a resource is shared among multiple consumers what do you mean by resource it can be anything like for example it can be your processor like when you're running you need the processor time it is a resource or your printer because printer is a resource which is shared among many people you don't have a one printer for each for example you're sharing it these are some of the examples so when a resource is shared among multiple consumers example cpu scheduling disk scheduling that time queues are used and another is when data is transferred asynchronously synchronous and asynchronous transfer of data that is for example you have a sending device and a receiving device when the speed or the uh, is not same that is the speed of the data sent is not same as the speed of the data received necessarily received at the same rate as sent then there is some lag between the two processes that includes a queue examples input output buffers files pipes etc these are some of the examples where the queues are used please have a look the next is what are the different types of queues yes this is a see 
for exam point of view cues and stacks are very very important it is either they can ask you the difference between q and stack or they can ask you to write the algorithm for nq and dq or push and pop and then the variations of cues like what are the different types of cues when they ask you different types of cues you should be able to write this and then what are the different queue operations also they can ask you so the different types are of queues are simple queue circular queue simple queue is repeated twice so write it once simple queue circular queue priority queue and dq that is double ended queue see don't get confused between dq as an operation which is deleting an element from a queue or double ended queue double ended queue is nothing but a type of queue so what is simple queue simple queue is a linear data structure which follows the all these structures follows the first in first out only but then wherein the insertion takes place from the rear and the deletion takes place from the front that is a simple queue you can have a look here a simple queue insertion occurs at the rear end of the list and the deletion happens at the front end of the list getting it this is a simple queue next is a circular queue a circular queue is a data structure where the elements of the queue are assumed to be arranged in a circle arranged in circle so what happens is the last rear gets attached that is a circular queue is a queue in which all nodes are treated as circular such that the last node follows the first node that is it is assumed to be arranged in a circle that is a circular queue the next is a priority queue so what do you mean by priority that is you can give priority even in temples when you go you have priority queues right that is for the general public which is free and then you have different rates like vip vvip the special pass entrance and each will have a separate queue based on that they will give priority like suppose they can send five people of vip and then one person of the common queue so same way it's a queue that contains items that has some priority present an element can be inserted or deleted from any position depending on the priority that is the priority queue next is before that we have double ended queue a double ended queue is a data structure in which elements can be added and deleted from either ends but not in the middle you cannot you can add elements to the uh, elements can be see normal simple queue is elements are added in the rear and deleted from the front but if i have double ended queue then i can do insertion from both and deletion also from both but it will be again it's divided into two entry res like you can have insertion and deletion from rear and only deletion from the front or insertion and deletion from the front and only insertion from the rear but you cannot take and out in elements that is insertion or deletion cannot take place in the middle that is double ended queue is a data structure in which elements can be added and deleted from either ends but not in the middle so these are the different types of queues the next is different queue operations what are the different operations i can 
do on a queue the same way you had stack operations also the same way you have queue operations and queue operations are also equally important they can ask you either stack operations or queue operations okay so the operations are queue it creates a new queue that is empty queue insert or nq i can also say queue insert or nq adds a value to the rear end of the queue the size of the queue will increase by 1 right because i insert an element that is q insert or nq is an operation on a queue wherein you add a value to the rear end of the queue when you add or insert any element into the queue the size of the queue will increase by one yeah the next is q delete or dq q delete what does it do deletes and returns the value at the front of the queue q delete or dq is an operation which deletes and returns the value at the front of the queue because deletion happens from front for you only they have mentioned the different types of queues we will be not doing either priority or circular or double ended queue we will be doing only simple queue in simple queue the insertion happens from the rear and the deletion happens from the front so nq or q insert where the value is inserted in the rear and the size of the queue increases by 1 the same way q delete or dq deletes and returns the value at the front of the queue and the size of the queue will be decreased by 1 yes when you take out an item from the queue that is it re removes the front item from the queue when you delete or take out an item from the queue it reduces the size of the queue by one and another one is size obtains the number of elements in the queue or it returns the number of elements in the queue is empty tests whether the queue is empty or not and apart from that there are two conditions again in the queue that is underflow condition what is underflow when you are trying to delete an element from an empty queue that is there are no elements in the queue and you are trying to delete it that gives raise to the underflow condition so if front is minus one it means that there are no elements in the queue otherwise front would be pointing to the element front is a pointer which will point to the element which has to be deleted right the front element of the queue but then if front is minus one we are using array based implementation here so it will become zero to n minus one where q is a uh, uh, q is an array wherein you will perform q operations of that with n elements so n elements the subscript or the index values would be 0 to n minus 1 so if front is minus 1 that is it means that there are no elements in the q to delete it gives raise to the underflow condition the other one is overflow condition overflow is nothing but when you are trying to insert to a already full queue how do you get that rare is equal to n minus 1 because when you say rare is equal to n minus 1 the insertion of an element happens to the from the rare of the queue and rare is a pointer which keeps track of it if rare is equal to minus 1 which n minus 1 which means that there are uh, there is no place in the queue to insert so it gives rise to the queue full or the overflow condition so please have a look now 
we will talk about the memory representation of a queue using an array okay we will be using array implementation of a queue a queue can be implemented using two ways using array which is static implementation that is the memory is fixed it is allocated during compile time so you cannot change it during run time the other one is a list linked list implementation or the dynamic implementation since queues are dynamic by nature so if you have a bigger one you, it is always if you have a limited or a restricted number like a less number it is better to have array implementation otherwise it is always better or good to implement queues in using dynamic implementation because as you know queue does not have a fixed size it increases or decreases so how do we what are the operations on a queue the operations on a queue are queue insertion that is n queue and the queue deletion that is dq also like q is represented in memory using a linear array here i am talking about the representation of a q using an array let q is an array two pointer variable why do i need two here because the insertion i am talking about a simple q here the insertion happens from the rare that is rare of the q uh, the insertion happens so the that is taken care by a pointer rare and the deletion happens from the front of the queue which is taken care or maintained by the pointer variable front so front and rare are two pointer variables which keep track of the front of the queue from which the element will be deleted and rare of the queue from which the element through uh, to which the element would be inserted that is the element is inserted to the rear of the queue and element is deleted from the front of the queue the pointer variable front contains the location of the element to be deleted or yes it will point to the element which has to be deleted like if you perform dq operation which element has to be deleted that is taken care by the front getting it again you cannot delete anything in between like suppose i have four elements without deleting the front element i cannot delete the third element no i cannot do that so the pointer variable front what it does it will keep the location of the element which has to be deleted or removed when you perform the dq operation the pointer variable rare contains the location of the last element inserted so if you want to insert one more you have to check whether rare is n minus 1 because 0 to n minus 1 is the size right if n q has n elements then 0 to n minus 1 would be the locations of that so if rare is pointing to n minus 1 means there are no place there is no place in the q to be inserted that is q is full or overflow so rare points to the location of the last element to be which was inserted then if you want to insert one more and if there is place what you have to do you have to increment rare make it point to a blank location and then q of rare is equal to element whatever element you are going to insert if front is equal to null or minus 1 then it means it's an empty queue right if front is minus 1 there it means it's an empty queue if rare is n minus 1 indicates that the queue is full so when front is null null or minus 1 you cannot delete from a queue because there are no elements from a queue that time it gives rise to the condition like you are trying to delete or you are performing an nq operation on an empty queue so first hopefully you have understood this please have a look and go through that i will write it and i will tell you what are the things you need to consider we'll start with the nq that is in queue insert operation so when you are going to insert what are the things you need to 
take care what are the things you need to see and what are the conditions i will do it for a queue of five elements and then i will we can do the algorithm and the program which becomes easier if you know how exactly the operation is performed fine before that i want you to go through the ppt see here for example this is a representation of an empty queue why because i don't have any elements here right so q of 0 let me say what will i write let q be a q let q be a what is a q q u e u e is a data structure so q be a q because that is why i have q of 0 q of 1 q of 2 q of 3 and q of 4 so let q be a q of n elements so let q be a q of let q be a q of n elements that is total number of elements are n here how many elements i am finding 5 so what is the value of n here 5 so n can be any number you need to declare since it is array based implementation like stack you need to declare the size of the queue in the beginning itself like we did with stack we'll be doing with queue also that is i need to declare the size i cannot take the size from the user because it is static implementation that is the uh, memory would be allocated for the queue during the compile time only and then i am not taking in number of elements in the queue i don't have to because as and when i insert or delete suppose if i am trying to delete from an empty queue it will give me in a queue empty underflow condition if i am trying to uh, insert or if i am trying to insert queue insert operation in a already full queue it will give me queue full message otherwise i am not worried about the number of elements are not getting it so it's not like an array that i have an array of 100 elements then i ask the user to enter the element because i don't have to enter the element in a loop here as and when i call the function those functions perform the insert or the delete operation so let q be a q of n elements in this example the n value is 5 so 0 to for or the location of the elements q of 0 would be the location of the first element q of 1 would be the location of the second element q of 2 is the location of the third element q of 4 is the location of the four and q of 5 would be sorry q of 4 would be the location of the fifth element then i have since in the queue the insertion happens from the rear and deletion happens from the front i need two pointers right to two pointers to keep the position or point to the position or point to the elements of the one which has to be deleted or which is the last inserted element so front and rear or uh, front and rear or positions of the front and rear elements of the queue so when i say front represents or points to what do they point to the front and the rear elements of the queue don't get confused here 
say q is an l q of n elements front and rear are the pointers which points to the front that is the element which has to be deleted because the deletion happens from the front end rear is the rear element is the last inserted element in the queue since the insertion happens from the rear okay front and rear are the pointers which points to those elements now if i want to insert an element into a queue the first thing i need to check is what for insertion or if you want to do queue insert operation or nq operation if you want to for insertion that is what q insert what are the things you need to do for q insertion or q insert first i need to first thing i need to is do is check for overflow q full or overflow okay when i want to insert i'll check for q full or overflow condition next if it is not true right if it is not true what i will do check whether this is the first element you are inserting So, why can you tell me see if the queue is empty front will be minus one rare also will be minus one so if this is the first element both of them front and rear would be minus 1 then you need to set the positions of both the uh, pointers to point to that element not only rear because front also should point to the q of 0 element and rear also should point to the q of 0 element when front and rear point to the same element it means that that is the last element in the queue so you no need not not only you will be resetting the rear pointer for insertion but you need to reset the front pointer also to point to the first element that is why you need to check whether this is the first element to be inserted or not then the third one is if it is not the first element then increment rear increment and insert in that location so the thing is this is how the insertion operation would work i will show you an example doing it the first thing is number of elements yes i should know n elements so 0 to n minus 1 would be the location of the elements and 
front and rear are the pointers which points to the front element and the rear element front element is the element if when you do the deletion operation that element would be deleted and rear points to the last element which is inserted then when i want to insert or do the nq q insert or the nq operation what you have to do is check for the q overflow condition whether there is any place in the q or not how do i do that rare is equal to n minus 1 if it is true then it means that i don't have any place left in the q because rare is a pointer which points to the last element inserted if the last element inserted is in the position of n minus 1 it means that you don't have any more place left in the q so check for the q overflow condition if that is not true then you will check whether this is the first element inserted because if it is the first element that is you are inserting an element into the empty q then front also will be minus one rear also will be minus one so you not only have to change or reset the value of rare because rare is equal to rare plus one will reset to zero but front will remain minus one only which is wrong because i have an element in the queue so front cannot be minus one only in an empty queue front will be minus one so you have to check whether this is the first element how do you check that if front is minus one it means that front and rear are minus one only if the, it means that there are no elements reset it to zero and then increment the third one is if front is not minus one and rare is not n minus one that is front is not minus one means there are elements in the queue and rare is not minus n minus one means there are there is still some place in the queue so front is not minus one so it is not an empty queue and rare is not equal to n minus one which means that there is still place in the queue then you increment the rare and q of rare would be that element this is the procedure when you need to do the q insert operation or nq or q insert operation next class i will take an example and i will insert the element in this queue till you reach the q overflow or q full condition fine so please make a note of today's homework question define q The second is, what are the different types of queues? Please list queue operation, okay? List The next is, list different types of queues. So these are the homework questions and these are the exam asked, repeatedly asked questions. Hope you have understood today's lecture. Tomorrow we will continue with the example. So stay safe, take care, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.